In today's video, we're going to talk about lithium titanate batteries and how I was incorrect in drawing one of my conclusions about the coulombic efficiency. I thought that the loss was 15% and I referenced a article from Electrical Engineering Times and I noticed that they took it down. I also noticed other YouTubers doing their own coulombic efficiency tests with brand new grade A Yinglong and Toshiba cells and they were pulling full capacity or around 99% coulombic efficiency. And in my first video, the test results were consistent and accurate, but I was just working with some cheap ripoff cells. These are grade B cells and I was not pulling full capacity. In a part two video with lithium titanate, I used these cells and these Toshiba cells and I did pull full capacity. So I did disprove that coulombic efficiency loss issue, but I don't think everybody saw those videos. So what's the actual coulombic efficiency of lithium titanate? From most sources, I'm reading 98 to 99%, and that's the numbers I'm getting with high quality cells at any rate under 1C. The lowest I've tested with this pack with high quality cells was 96% coulombic efficiency. And that's a large difference than what I stated previously of 85%. So my first video was incorrect in assuming that the coulombic efficiency was very low. I also was wrong in assuming that electrical engineering times would be accurate. I thought that they were a good reference source, but I was wrong. But now let's talk about lithium titanate and some new things that I have learned. First of all, compared to lithium iron phosphate, I do not prefer lithium titanate at all. First, the number one factor that we need to consider is price. These cost two to four times as much as lithium iron phosphate if you buy grade A cells that are matched. Next, the volumetric density is pretty horrible. These are very large cells. If you're using it for a stationary system and size is not an issue, then this doesn't matter. Next problem is specific energy is very low, so these are very heavy. But as I said previously, if this is for a stationary system, this does not matter. Next problem is you cannot use lithium titanate with a 12 volt solar power system at all. You can use it for 24 and 48 volt systems with an 11 or 22 S configuration. And in my previous video, I was questioning for 12 volt whether to use a 5 S or a 6 S configuration. And I figured that 6 S was better because the usable capacity was in a voltage range that was preferable for 12 volts. But this week I found out that 6S is not good for 12 volt systems at all either. And how I drew this conclusion is I used a 6S BMS in pack and I did a capacity test when I charged up all the way to around 18 volts. And that's three volts per cell. That's the maximum that these cells can handle and I pulled full capacity, so that was good news. Then I used a standard lithium iron phosphate charger that goes to 14.5 volts, and then I charged up this pack. And when the current dropped to zero, I did a capacity test, and guess what? I only got 78% of the original capacity from the first test. And that's just due to not having a usable voltage range for this cell configuration. You might get more capacity with a 5S configuration, but the voltage will be too low to use with standard 12 volt equipment. And like I said in my previous video, the low voltage alarms were going like crazy and I did not pull full capacity at all. So the conclusion I have drawn is that you cannot use lithium titanate with standard 12 volt equipment. A big reason for this compared to lithium iron phosphate and why we can't arrange the cells in strategic ways to make a useful working voltage range is because this has a very wide voltage range and has a more linear discharge SOC curve. And with lithium iron phosphate, you do not have that large of a voltage range. It stays relatively the same throughout the cycle. So it's a lot easier for lithium iron phosphate to work with standard equipment because you can arrange the cells in a way until you hit the perfect working voltage and then it will stay there. For these, the working voltage can vary quite a bit because it's a more linear curve. The next problem I realized with lithium titanate being used for 12 volts with a 6S configuration is that the BMSs that they sell for 6S, their balancing threshold for top balancing isn't reached until the pack's nominal voltage is at 15.9 volts. So what that means is that these cells will not balance until that threshold is reached. 
And that is typical for top balancing packs. Typically, it's around like 13.7 volts or higher for lithium iron phosphate. And what this means is that if you do have excessive cell drift and your cells become out of balance over time, whether because the internal resistance is not matched for your pack and you're using physically damaged or used cells or heavily degraded cells, or you are simply using high C-rate loads and chargers, then you will have excessive cell drift and hitting that voltage threshold may be difficult. Um, maybe if you are designing a system where all the loads are above or around 15.9 volts, then sure, these could work. And I know that the audio guys can actually pull that off. Some of those guys don't even use a BMS at all and they work fine. And then they run the alternators like 15 volts or higher. So in that specific application, it can work. But for solar equipment that does not like that voltage, you're gonna have a problem there. Next thing I should mention is that even though these have a high charge and discharge C rate, I don't think most people, especially for solar, are going to use it. You could make the argument that if you have a high output externally regulated alternator running at a higher voltage and you have lithium titanate or you have a DC boost converter and you are running a 24 48 volt pack and you want to charge from an externally regulated alternator, especially for like a marine or an RV or a van, you could use these. Also add to the fact that you can charge these at really cold temperatures. These would make for a very robust mobile pack if size and weight are not an issue. But I don't think for stationary use that matters much, especially if these cells are not gonna get very cold and you're not gonna charge and discharge them very quickly. Also, I haven't been able to find exact data for this. I did have a graph previously that I referenced, but at high C rates, these do become more inefficient and that's the same for all batteries, right? On the internal resistance, you'll create more heat the faster you push power in and out of these. And at higher rates, you will have efficiency loss. And I've actually charged these at 3.5 C and they get really, really hot. So you do have to keep that in mind. And personally, I think if you do want a high C rate pack, you might as well just use lithium polymer. I mean, I used to run 75 C to 100 C discharge rates with my previous packs for drone racing. Why use lithium titanate that's limited to 10 C when you can do 75 to 100 C if that's your actual application? The working temperature range isn't that great though compared to lithium titanate and the cycle life is horrible. But if you're trying to pull that much current, you might as well use another chemistry if that's your intended use application. Also, these cells are rated for 20 to 30,000 cycles from most of the literature that I've read. But I was thinking that calendar aging might kill these before you even reach that cycle value. For solar, you might charge and discharge two or three times a day and at the minimum once a day. So I don't think most people trying to use these for solar could really even use that charge cycle life. Even if you cycle daily, that would be 54 years. So I'm pretty sure that I would be dead long before this pack would die, which is a huge benefit of this. But lithium iron phosphate would probably do just the job at one fourth the price. And in 50 years, I'm pretty sure we're gonna replace these. So I think lithium iron phosphate will be best to hold us off until we have solid state batteries. But these batteries are still incredible. I'm not trying to talk them down. I do the same thing with all chemistries. I try to find all of the potential downsides and let you guys choose on your own what's best for your application. I think that these are still incredible in the working temperature range and the high C rate are so, so cool. And the cycle life degradation, those charts are incredible, but I don't want to spend all of that money and deal with all of the downsides. I think that these are great for some people, but not really for me for solar still. And I also have an intended use application that I want to share with you guys. I ordered three different sets of these batteries. So we're going to experiment with those when I get them in about five to six weeks. I want to say that I'm sorry about being wrong about the Coulombic efficiency conclusion. I figured that referencing someone like Electrical Engineering Times would be smart to do. And it matched the data that I got from my test results. But that's not true. I had grade B cells and I was charging and discharging at a very high rate when I use Toshiba or these cells, I forgot who makes these ones, I got the full capacity. 
So yeah, these could be really good cells for some of you. Not for 12 volt systems, but yeah, if you're running a 24 volt to 48 volt in a very cold temperature, then these might be great for you. And something else I need to mention quickly is in some other YouTube videos, people were saying that because I like lithium iron phosphate so much, that I am so biased that I do not like lithium titanate because I don't make money off of these. And actually, I would make way more money off of these. These cost like two to four times as much and the affiliate commission payout would be much higher. But no, I suggest lithium iron phosphate because it's cheaper and better. I mean, for the price, it's very hard to beat lithium iron phosphate for stationary or mobile use for solar power systems. I'd also probably make more money if I were selling lead acid batteries because they die so much faster. So yeah, lithium iron phosphate batteries, I make the least amount of money and I always try to find the cheapest battery pack available. It is the best bang for your buck. It is the best value around. If you disagree with me, please state in the comment section why. I still think lithium titanate is amazing. I love lithium polymer. I love NMC. I love all the chemistries of lithium ion, but I still prefer other chemistries for solar power systems. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good day and I hope you guys like this video. I will talk to you later. Bye.